computer, yes. Hello, everybody. I'm Erin Bush, Diamond Ambassador with Plexus. I'm so glad you guys are on tonight. I am so excited about tonight because I am on with Diamond Ambassador Charlotte Seams. This lady will blow your socks off. Her life is so full and she overcomes that fullness. She has a no excuses uh, perspective about Plexus and her business. And uh, she's been through some tough times too, and yet has still prevailed. And she works very, very hard. So I want you guys to hear her story. And then she's gonna give us some tips on just how she was able to overcome all the reasons she had not to do this business. Because we know that from that the, what, the, what the health products do, we know. But we have that roller coaster of life that can happen while we're trying to build a business and be a self entrepreneur. And Charlotte has overcome so much. So I am going to give this over to you, Charlotte. Thank you so much for being on. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what your journey has been like, especially in this last year, because I know you and I talked a little bit about just some stuff that's gone on with you. And I feel like I've had desert times in my business for sure. And then you came out like, a rocket i'm trying to find a good analogy what was that april or may it was like, last month may last may signing yeah we're in june may signing like 17 people that's amazing and and for and i know that as a jewel in plexus you know usually your market gets smaller and smaller the longer you are in a business because unless you're constantly expanding your network so this you were the top diamond um enroller in the month of may so tell us tell us a little bit about your journey how you came to plexus and uh give us some great tips go for it okay okay well i am the mother of 12 children I had them one at a time same husband they are now ages 12 to almost 36. We have six sons and six daughters. I meant to do that. <laughs> and we have eight grandchildren. And I just got back from my one of my grandchildren's little two-year-old birthday party. And uh, when I found Plexus four and a half years ago, I was pretty sick. And I was on, I'm going to tell the real part, real story. I'm not going to tell the compliant version. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was on two thyroid prescriptions, both Synthroid and uh, armor and I was doing bioidentical hormone implants in my hip every few months. I was taking a prescription called spironolactone to help with the effects of hormone imbalance and if I didn't take that my uh, testosterone levels were off the chart and I would grow a mustache and my face would break out and I tried to wean myself off of that medication at least five times over the two and a half years that I took it and I just couldn't do it. And I did not like being on chemical prescriptions, but you know, the doctors are just telling me too bad. That's what happens when you're this age. So I found Plexus. I just wanted to try it out to maybe lose a few pounds. And when I found Plexus, I was in the midst of eight months of abnormal postmenopausal bleeding. I had had uh, an ultrasound and a biopsy. They thought it was cancer, but it wasn't. So I had surgery scheduled. So enter Plexus and by my second bag of Slim, the bleeding stopped because blood sugar and hormones and thyroid and adrenals are all just so intertwined. So as my doctor explained to me, you know, we balance the blood sugar and it affects everything else. So I was basically, I was released from surgery. So I was pretty excited about Plexus. My, also my doctor had me come in every other month and she backed me off of my thyroid prescriptions that I'd been on for five and a half years that they had kept raising the amounts, the dosage, and she backed me off of them. I have now been off of those thyroid prescriptions for four years. Um, I had lab work done a few months ago. Thyroid levels are perfect. And I thought I would go to the pharmacy every month for the rest of my life. And so Plexus was actually really a surprise to me because I did not expect it to do all that, did not expect it to help me have energy and to, um, you know, just change my life in so many ways and make me happier and my husband too. So when I joined Plexus, I, I had no intention of doing the business. I, I told my sponsor, Brenda Martin, 
I told her, I am not going to sell anything. I do not want to do this business. And did I mention, I don't want to sell anything. <laughs> so she was very patient with me. And then I just got to where I couldn't help but tell people about Plexus. So I had a blog that I'd been blogging about, oh, about five years at that time, probably. And so my business grew really fast at first because my readers, you know, they had been reading my posts and things for years. And so they joined me very quickly. But I quickly found out that you don't get to diamond just by signing up a bunch of people. You have to help other people get to where they want to be. And so I had that journey, you know, over the, over the years. I took me, I think it was 11 months to Emerald, another 11 months to Sapphire. And then I was Sapphire. I don't know. I can't remember. It was three and a half years to Diamond, whatever that ends up being. So anyway, but I, you know, I rolled along with Plexus doing my, I love the business. I love helping people. It's been a fun business. And then a couple of years ago, I tripped over something in my closet, a humidifier, and I hurt my foot. And I remember I went to convention in Vegas that year with a swollen, bruised foot limping around. And I don't know why I didn't go to the doctor, but I didn't go to the doctor for four months. I kept thinking I jammed it, you know? Well, then started a roller coaster of misdiagnoses and um, neglect to some extent. I was in a boot for months and months. I was non-weight bearing with a scooter for months and months. And that just caused further damage and further whatever. But I finally found a doctor and I finally, I had a midfoot fusion where they fuse bones in the top of your foot. And then a few months later, I had, um, I have a scar where I had um, two discs in my neck fused because of all the months on the scooter, the jarring uh, deteriorated discs further, and it was causing terrible arm pain, terrible nerve pain in my arms. And then a few months later, I had to have another surgery on the same foot to remove scar tissue and a tendon and all that in my ankle. So during that time, that was about, I think it was three surgeries in 10 or 11 months. During the same period of time, this is when we're going through the two years of two new back offices. And my husband and I, all four of our parents died. And so <laughs> that, was, that was a very long winter of time. And so my business, I was so grateful that I had worked so hard in the first few years of my business because that residual income kept coming in during all that time when I wasn't able to, you know, really work hard. I wasn't, I, of course, I helped my team. I was still working, but I wasn't really recruiting. I wasn't adding a lot of people. In fact, I just discovered in the back office last night, you know, the old consistency club from last year, they don't have the new one posted yet, but you could see how many you've personally sponsored every month. <laughs> Ooh, it was like zero and zero and zero, one, zero, two, and then zero, zero, zero. <laughs> so it just showed me my history, the path of my history that I really was not personally sponsoring. And that started out, and I had legitimate, I had legitimate stuff going on, okay? Let, let's be clear about that. I, in fact, my points continued to increase. I actually hit diamond during that whole time, which is crazy. That's the mercy of God. But it got to where that was my identity. Um, when my business slowed down and I had all this stuff going on, I started talking to myself and telling myself, well, you know, boy, you know, you really can't do much. And, you know, no wonder you're not sponsoring, just kind of giving myself an out. And what happened was a, a few months ago, I decided to do some business coaching in this year. It's just, it's a, it's called high performance coaching through Brendan Burchard's group. And um, I've been in it since, is it the Feb February, I think? Okay. And this is a question. This started my journey back to the business, I guess you could say, or back to feeling like I'm a lot more productive. And of course I've healed better. I'm still not all the way there. But then, you know, we, we've gotten over our parents as far as, as, as much as you can. My mother-in-law, bless her heart, last September, it's too soon. I mean, but we're still dealing with that. But um, think, you know, life has, has gotten a little more back to normal, whatever that is. <laughs> so, but listen, this question, And it was like a revelation to me. And I'm going to ask you this question right now. Or it's not even a question. It's something that you need. And this, this is it. Describe how you've perceived yourself in the following situations over the past several months. With your significant other. With your work. Your team. 
and in social situations with strangers. And that hit me in the face because I realized what I had perceiving myself as, as someone who, you know, their business is slowed down, they can't recruit, someone who has all these health issues, is in chronic pain, which is truth to some extent, but I didn't need to have that as my identity. Um, what do we tell ourselves about our marriage or about our business? How do we perceive ourselves? We think, well, but if I, you know, work really hard on my business, I might neglect my family. So we block ourselves out of that fear. And it is not true. Wait till you see my diamond documentary. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a wonderful day, wasn't it, Erin? It was just a special day. But my, my grown kids and my kids that were in my diamond documentary just talked about how thrilled they were for me and how they knew Lexus had changed our lives. There was no, um, nobody resenting or being bitter about it. And that's because I've intentionally built my business so that my family doesn't get resentful or feel neglected and those kinds of things. And so it's not true. So don't perceive yourself that way that you will neglect your family if you build your business. So describe how you've perceived yourself over the past several months. And then now ask yourself, is that who I really see myself being in the future? How would my future self look, feel, and behave differently in those situations. Whoa, <laughs> that is powerful. Because when we realize what we've been telling ourselves and how we see ourselves, how we describe ourselves to other people, the words we use when we talk about ourselves and our business, when you realize what you've really been doing, and then you start thinking about, is that really what I want for my future? And, if, and my future self, you know, my future self a year from now, how would my future self that I want to be look, feel, and behave differently? And so it was at that point that I chose some words to help, it. And, and, and it's in different areas of my life. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. I have them written down somewhere, but <laughs> I don't have them right here. But it was amazing how just choosing some words of which connected means connected to my family and connected to people in my business, connected to prospects, because I'm a person that can tend to hide. Like I'm not a, a real extrovert person. And um, I, I, don't, I don't wanna label myself that. <laughs> I, 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 all of us are people persons. God created us to connect with people. And so it's kind of a, a, an out and an excuse when we say, oh, I'm just not a people person. Well, if you're not, you need to become one to succeed in this business. <laughs> but, um, but just to have words like connected really keeps that before me and it keeps me moving. We, we've moved towards what we think about. And so to have to choose some words of what I want to be really impacts me. And to think that I want to be loving and forgiving when somebody does something that annoys me and I think, I am loving and forgiving and it just diffuses it in me. And it just, it's been a beautiful, it's like a prayer almost to say those words and to let God do that work in me because I'm conscious of what I'm moving towards. And so um, I wanted to give you a couple of other things. You know, so many of us are, are living a life based on our old insecurities and our old identity, our old thoughts that we used to have. We're still trying to live that way. And Plexus changes us and this business changes us. Embrace that and be aware that you're no longer that person you were back then. And don't live from that. Um, focus and live from your strengths, not your limitations. You know, we tend to live from our limitations. I am 58 years old and I know there are, I've been in some groups where older ambassadors are saying things like, well, yeah, it's easy for the younger ones and stuff like that. And, or, you know, that I don't look like a typical jewel, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, you know, the younger, blonder, whatever, you know. And so sometimes I have to admit, I have let that um, make me feel not enough or focusing on my limitations. It was very interesting. When we do that, it stops us in our tracks from what we were meant to do. 
one of my coach one time asked me, what are some of the challenges you face in your business? What are the, some of the things you feel, you know, that are, that are hard for you or whatever. And, and I said, you know, I'm older and I have a very large family to take care of. Um, I can't remember a couple of things. So then she said, okay, so what are your strengths in the business? And I said, well, I'm older. <laughs> and I have a lot of experience to offer. And um, I have this amazing family that I have worked so hard, you know, with, and I've learned so much and I can share that with people. And so it made me realize how I was perceiving myself. I was stopping myself in my tracks with those perceptions of myself instead of, you know, living from my strengths. So you can't live there. It's, it's self-shaming to continually focus on your inadequacies and comparing yourself. And when we make shame the measure of our, when we, when we make speed the measure of our business, it creates shame. And when you feel shamed about your business, it does not make you want to do it. So when you're comparing yourself to everybody else and seeing how that girl went fast and that girl's winning the prizes for the cruise, whatever, you're shaming yourself. And then that creates these associations in your brain with your business. And you don't want that. You want your business to be amazing and fun. Something you do that just fulfills you and helps people. Those are the thoughts that you wanna be having. And so you just have to be so self-aware because awareness is the beginning of change. Absolutely. And so that was really some of the, a few of the shifts that I made, um, kind of coming back to life after all the challenges. And believe me, it was very real challenges. All of my surgeries had very painful and very long recoveries and I still have daily pain. Um, and so chronic pain can, get tempt you to turn inward and, and only think of yourself and that was a that was a, a challenge to to overcome that and it um you know just it got me into this self-talk of well you can't do that all that okay so this brings me around to the last part of my story that talks about sponsoring 17 people in may i had i've had you know i've had this blog well, over the last two or three years, I had barely blogged every once in a while, you know, every three months or something, I might do a post and send an email to my email list. And it was because of my perception of myself and telling myself continually all the time, well, you know, you're so busy with Lexus, you just can't do that. And, you know, there's just no way and your team and all that, and you just can't do it. And after working with my coach and realizing that that was part of my passion and my calling because one of my purposes in life is to encourage and inspire people and to to try to spare people some of the things that I've been through and the hard lessons I had to learn as a young mom and a mom with such a huge family and 31 years of homeschooling and 38 years of marriage to be able to teach those lessons and by not blogging I, I was who's not going to get helped? What if one of my granddaughters was going to read that 40 years from now, read my blog and maybe help her through something, my great granddaughter that I don't even know, but it wouldn't be there if I'm not blogging. And so um, I made a commitment to send an email to my list once a week. And so um, I don't blog every week. I blog about twice a month and I have so many posts on my blog that I can go back and repurpose, <laughs> you know, or I send out an email that's just encouragement. But I had been doing that consistently for three months when they released Joy Ohm. And I had no idea that was coming. But so then I had been serving people and encouraging them and ministering to them out of what God gave me for three months. And so when Joy Ohm hit, 17 people joined my team and I still have more that are joining this month. But it came be and, and you know, you might say, well, then I'm going to start a blog. No, I'm not saying that because I think starting a blog to grow your plexus business could be a real um, distraction. I had an existing blog and I was using that tool. For me, blogging is an income producing activity more so than social media than for some people. I mean, that's more my income producing activity. But social media is micro blogging. Um, it's tiny blogging. It's sharing your life. You still have to be vulnerable. You still have to be real and you can't act like you're perfect. People 
tell me all the time, oh, you're so real. And, you know, because they like it that I don't say, you know, do as I do and you too can be perfect. You know, we've all read those blogs that make you feel less than. I don't read them. I unsubscribe or I don't, I don't read anything that makes me feel like I'm not good enough. I, end of story. Just don't expose yourself to that. And, and even if I know it's my own, I need to work on my own identity in Christ and that God's doing some work in me, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to uh, purposely expose myself to something that is painful like that, you know. And I could probably go back and read the same thing two years from now, and I will have done enough personal growth while well, I'll laugh and say, that poor girl that thinks she knows everything, you know, because <laughs> I'm so glad I did not blog when I was 30 years old because I thought I knew everything. I did. And I was legalistic, and I was judgmental, and I wish I would have known that was the most I was ever going to know because ever since then, I know less and less and less. And the more kids I had, the less I know. And so I know nothing about parenting or homeschooling. So don't ask. No. <laughs> so, but maybe that's the beginning of wisdom to know you don't know anything. But um, anyway, so I just want to encourage you. Don't, don't, you know, it's an excuse. It's a blocking. I can say all this stuff to you guys because, you know, you're not my team. So I can be really hard on you. <laughs> Preach the sermon, you know. <laughs> but you know, you can think to yourself, well, that's fine for her. She's got a blog, you know, or you might think, see some other jewel and think, well, that's fine for her. She's got, you know, five jewels and she got that girl that was a rock star. If you judge things, you're not. On it and you're criticizing it and you're jealous. And so be very careful what you judge. If you're judging wealthy people, you ain't going to be one because your brain will say, Ooh, I don't want anyone to judge me. So I'm not going to be rich. I don't know about you, but I want to be rich. <laughs> hey, that sounds good to me. You know, we should all have, we should have the money because we'll do good things with it. And, you know, last time I checked, the best way to help poor people is to not be one of them. And so that's another whole sermon in itself about money and business, our thoughts about business. But um, anyway, but there you have things in your hand <clears throat> excuse me that are your strengths and that you're good at that's your jam and that might be facebook that might be instagram <clears throat> it might be in person it might be your mom's group it might be facebook groups there's stuff that if you really focused on it and were consistent and it wasn't hiding behind a salesy post and a and a graphic from the shareables that's the chicken way to do business, to hide behind an ad. When if you tell your real story and you're vulnerable and it's a real story, <coughs> excuse me, people feel that. But, <coughs> sorry, let me get drink some more. Focus on serving and encouraging, teaching and inspiring do 10 posts that do that and one plexus i don't post about plexus very often actually and this is just what works for me but when i do i sign people up because i don't talk about it all the time and i have people message me because it's not something i do all the time i try to share my family and don't go look at my facebook as the example of the world because i told you that that's not my main source of recruiting people my email list is not even my blog my email list and what my email list is is when people sign up and i email them every week i'm serving them consistently just like a micro blog but i connect with them and it's hard i've stayed up till two o'clock in the morning many times over the years to get that email out i've done the hard things some people might say oh well, you were an overnight success no i stayed up in the night and i did this when it was hard you know all those things so but I'm serving people. That's my, you know, and I, and I, I encourage people. I answer questions. I educate, um, talk about mindset. Last week, my issue shared my bathroom redecoration. <laughs> After I sent it, I thought, should I have sent a picture of my bathroom? But I didn't show the toilet or anything, but anyway, but it was, I was excited about it. And so I shared the new flower arrangement and the new blue towels and all that kind of stuff. So, um, week before, I mean, the issue before it was, uh, my, daughter-in-law's medical school graduation party that was hilarious we had really funny um pun foods and things so anyway 
I'm not saying you have to blog, but you can use the same principles in whatever income producing activity you do. One last thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I have been working closely with several of my team members lately on messaging and things that they're saying to people. And I discovered to my horror that they're sending these messages that are like this long and they're very scientific and they're very proper. And so I'm working with them on, girl, you need to do this. Let's sign you up. <laughs> I think that's more effective most of the time than I want to tell you about my health journey with new health supplements called Plexus and go on and on about the brand names and what they, the ingredients are and all that stuff. That doesn't sound like real people. That sounds like a salesman. So that's my own opinion, but I get pretty good results from the girl that's get you signed up kind of thing. So, okay, that's what I have for you, Erin. If anybody has questions or you do, feel free. This, I, this is so good and I totally agree about the verbiage. I threw up Plexus a lot in the beginning and have found the less I say and the more questions I ask the better. But I have to reiterate a couple of, of things. I mean, first of all, to have three surgeries in such a short amount of time, you've got, and even though some of your kids are out of the house, you still have, you know, kids you got to go see and, and grandkids you got to pour into. I mean, that's a lot of pulling you in different places. Yes. I've got three and I'm barely managing. We um, have 28 family members now. Yeah. And that's, that's spouses and, yeah. big. So <laughs> yeah. And you're a pastor's wife. Then your husband had just recently had a surgery too. Yeah. A few days ago. He had a yeah. rotator cuff. Yeah. Good. And so, but one of the things you, I, I took like four pages of notes, but I just want to reiterate a couple of them. Um, asking yourself the hard questions we rarely take the time to do that and we need to because it's like 90 percent of this business wouldn't you say is self-development absolutely and if we are not asking ourselves those hard questions and examining our soul then how in the world can we grow so i love that um and who do you see yourself in the future like do those words define you a year from now and then you said, um, we move toward what we think about. So my question is to people watching, are you thinking about your lack of point? Are you thinking about your um, lack of rank? Or are you thinking about your future rank and what you're going to be in your future points? It's kind of like that visionary thing, wouldn't you say, Charlotte? You know, envisioning what you want to be and what you want to have happen, and then we act towards that when we envision it. Absolutely, you know, before I hit Sapphire, I remember I printed a copy of the, like I did a screenshot of the back office, the part that showed our points, and I edited it in a program and made it the points I wanted it to be. And I, you know, printed it and put it on my wall. And I just believe there's power in that um, and speaking it, you know, instead of always thinking about, I don't have any rock stars and my points, I've gone backwards and I've lost rank. I mean, saying stuff like that. Yeah. No, no, no. That's not what you want. To, you want to be so grateful for everything you have in your business. And, um, you know, just focus on what you want. I love that. I love that printing that up. You, that is so good. I did not do that. I laid in the bathtub and circled the number. The, I, for me, it was emerald. I wanted to envision myself emerald and envision myself standing on stage and envisioning every time I would log in the back office, it said 1,500 points. But that's the same except more tangible. And I love that. I love that. You said... Um, we tend to live from our limitations when we should be living from our strengths. And that's also goes back to, you need to know yourself like what, and you even said, like you started talking about, you felt like um, one of your limitations being older Then you, then he said, you said, well, wait, that's one of my strengths. That was yeah. so good. I love that. But I was thinking of it as a limitation a whole lot more than as a strength. And so it affected me when I was around other younger ambassadors, let's say, instead of me thinking, wow, I have a lot to share with my experience. I was thinking, oh, I'm older. I don't fit in. Mm -hmm. And so people feel that vibe. It was my issue, my rejection issues, my identity issues. It wasn't anything to do with anybody else. 
Yeah. And so I, it, it's, it's just it, fascinating how we kind of blame it on other people, but it's really what's going on yeah. in ourselves. Yes. I love that. And then um, piggybacking that, you said exposing yourself to things that make you not feel enough. Now, even so, I actually just had that conversation with my husband today at lunch that I was feeling not enough about because I was looking at somebody else who is younger and better and wiser, much wiser than I was at that age and such an amazing poster and blah, blah, blah. And doing that comparison thing. And, and yet that's, and, and I was wallowing in it. <laughs> <laughs> we wallow. And, and it's, we almost like it. Oh, yeah. oh, it's so, it's such a comfortable place to be because it gives us an excuse. It gives us a reason. So I, yeah, but what, and, and there's nothing wrong with me following her, except that it is causing something bad here. So guess what? She's still going to be my friend on Facebook, but for now I am going to unfollow and there's nothing wrong. With that. that is very smart. So there, I love that. And then let's, there's one more here. Oh, oh phone and it looks like it's about to die. Hang on. Okay. Plug it in. I'm going to say your last quote here. When we make the speed of our business the definition of our business, we create shame in our business. Oh my goodness, I'm going to make a graphic with well, your it's, name it's, at the bottom. It's when we make speed the definition of success in our oh, business. Oh, the definition of success. Okay, I'm changing in that. our business, then it creates shame. Yeah, and when we should be, that's when you talked about serving and ministering, serving and ministering. And you don't have to be a minister's wife to minister. No. So don't think that, don't like be well, she's ministering to people because she is a, no, no. This is, anybody can bring, you can bring value. It's bringing value, right? It's bringing value. Right. Oh, I love that so much. That's what it is. It is. Okay, I know that other people have other things, but I don't want to spend any more of your time because you've spent over 30 minutes with us and I'm so Oh, can you please repeat that? Sure. All right, Charlotte, repeat that again. When the when you make speed, when Say you make, oh gosh, <laughs> my phone is. Oh gosh, we can hang still on. hear you. I know, and I'm trying to get. I just plugged in my. There you computer. are. Okay, um, when you make speed the measure of success in your business, it creates shame. The measure of six. I gotta write. I gotta get a new page. When you make speed. And how often do we do that? Oh, all the time. Or we could all say when you make can, when you make leaders retreat credits. Yeah. <laughs> the measure of success in your business or points or rank or whatever else. And we yeah, and this is and this is about one per, you know, bringing value and blessing one person at a time. It's not about speed, it's not about rank, it's not about, you know, I mean, yes, you're blessing your family and blessing others, but when you make it unselfishly about somebody else, which is what you're saying. And you know, God is not surprised by our circumstances, but we have to remember that maybe he wants you to be a diamond and you're the one saying no because I'm not smart enough and I might not take care of my family. You've got all these reasons that you're blocking and all these fears and you're putting all your faith and fear and maybe God had more for you, but you're, you're the one blocking. So we have to, you know, not block that. So what would be your tip on how to discover what that block might be for somebody who's sabotaging their own business and their own success? Um, someone recently said terrorist sabotage that we don't say, you know, I've always heard that self-sabotage thing. I thought that was interesting, but um, you know, it's personal growth. It's continually asking God to show you and then be sure you're reading and listening. And it's always a growth process. Invest in yourself, invest in your personal development. Um, I have done that for most of my life, I think. And because I just want to get better, I want to be the best version. I want to be who God created me to be. We're not becoming somebody different. We're, we're peeling off layers of stuff. That's not really us. Yes. So don't worry about, you know, to, to become an emerald, you have to be somebody different. No, you're still going to be you. You're going to be more authentically you than you were when you were hiding out at gold. Oh, and the only difference between a silver and a diamond is the diamonds helped a lot more people. 
and has been told no more and has had more challenges to overcome. It's not like it's all been roses, girls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know totally anybody who's been roses. Worth it. Yeah. yeah totally yeah. worth it. But it's, it's an honorable thing to want to rank up because what you're really saying is I want to help more people. Oh, I love that. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Charlotte. You go back okay. to your family and oh, I'm so grateful for you and for pouring into us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, everybody. Okay. Have a great night. Okay. Good night.